words encase ideas and they're limiting by their very nature. So there's going to be a lot of words in this video. And my intention is to empower you. The idea is that you take Mercury retrograde every time it happens as an opportunity to improve your life. It's Mr. Meyer with the fire. You take the collective vibe higher. And this is your definitive Mercury retrograde guide. Because this happens three to four times every single year, you need not fear. This is actually an opportunity for you to live a better life. The most important thing I'm going to tell you about this video is that everything outside of you is for your use. Okay? So I'm going to explain what Mercury is, what a retrograde, a retrograde is, how the two work together. I'm going to explain the current retrograde that we're going through, the major aspects and alignments that are going to occur during that time. And I'm going to give you some guidance as far as how you can make this a beneficial time for you. First point, which I feel like I've already illustrated pretty well, the planets are going to spin regardless. They're going to do what they're going to do. Do you have control over that? Probably not. If you did, somebody would have stopped Mercury's retrograde by now. So we have to get with the program, guys. This is not going to be stopping anytime soon. Mercury retrogrades last about two months. If you really start from the pre-shadow to the end of the post-shadow, and I'm going to explain the difference between what those are and what they mean also in this video. So if you think about it, almost half the time Mercury is retrograde. Not quite. It's mostly direct, but it goes retrograde frequently. So what is a retrograde? Because I also want to add that Mercury is not the only planet that goes retrograde. We have almost always at least one planet in retrograde. If you start watching them, like hell, the outer planets that move the slowest because we're looking back at them from Earth. Some of these are going to be retrograde half the year, every single year. All right. So it's just important to understand that there's nothing good or bad about a retrograde. What is a retrograde? Let's talk about it. This is an optical illusion. So every planet in the solar system orbits around the sun. And this is the basic astronomy. I hope you guys love this video. And if you do, please consider leaving a like or sharing it with 10 friends or 100 friends or subscribing or just, you know, tell me how awesome I am. I love to hear it. It makes me so happy. So Mercury and any other planet besides the moon really can go retrograde. Okay. And some would say the moon isn't really a planet. And the only reason the moon can't go retrograde is because it's orbiting around the Earth. So a retrograde is an optical illusion. Every planet in the solar system is orbiting around the sun in the same direction. And it's orbiting around the sun in the direction that the sun is rotating. Did you guys know the sun is rotating? All right. So essentially, because the planets are at different distances away from the sun, the orbits will appear to switch in their direction every so often, all right? Mercury is the first planet after the sun. I'm pretending like this microphone is the sun, guys. So Mercury is like zipping around the sun super quick. Mercury's fast. Mercury is the Roman god of communication and messages and travel, by the way, too. So the astronomers actually named the planet accordingly to its energy and its archetypes. So Mercury really is all about communication. It's all about travel. Mercury rules the sign of Gemini and Virgo, the third house and the sixth house. So before I tell you more about retrogrades, just understand that the whole point of Mercury, this planet in transit and in your own natal chart is the power of perception, which is Gemini, and the power of focus, which is Virgo. All right. And that's the masculine side, Gemini, feminine side, Virgo. OK, so understand, again, words will limit ideas when you think you have your own imagination, an image, a realm, a picture, something like that. But it, to, to be able to explain it, to exchange it, you have to communicate it in some way. All right. So. I know in any YouTube video, the engagement just goes down over time. Some people will watch to the end, but I just want you guys to know the most important thing about Mercury retrograde is this is all about mindset. And this is part of the spiritual jargon, the nomenclature, like your thoughts can change your life. 
especially right now. Mercury retrograde can affect things externally, but it's more important to remember that your internal world is the cause and reflection of the external world, okay? Can you control Mercury's retrograde? No. You can control your perception. Yes. So that's what we're going to do. So just understand that because we're all orbiting around the sun the same way, and we're a little bit further away from Mercury because it's closer to the sun, Mercury is going to look like it's kind of darting back and forth across the face of the sun from our perspective. But literally, physically, it's not actually reversing its direction. It's just how we're appearing to how it's appearing to us, how we're seeing it essentially. OK, but during the time when a planet is retrograde, the natural energies and archetypes of the planet can be a little bit suppressed or slowed down. OK, so a lot of you guys have probably heard about retrogrades before. Some of you might be your first time hearing this, but this is a time that's marked by communication issues, travel issues, uh, miscommunications, glitches, technology breaking down, weird things happening, unprecedented, motor skills not being the way that you normally have them, communication being challenging once again, and then also you have this, I don't want to say prolific, but this infamous exes coming back or people wanting to reconcile or people you used to talk to might come back into your life. And me personally, I'm not really here to talk about that. <laughs> you know, it'll happen whenever, man. Sometimes these things happen outside of a Mercury retrograde. And you got to remember again, guys, this is going to happen three to four times a year. And from pre-shadow to post-shadow, and it'll be about two months each time. So it's like, hey, this is life, man. And I just want to really make this video to give you the time frame of events for this Mercury retrograde. And again, just make sure that you understand that this is your mindset, man. Because like quite literally, astrology is a profound tool with almost unlimited utility. But just like a knife, you can cut out the bullshit or you can cut yourself accidentally. So we're not trying to do that. And that's a metaphor. It's like a meta five if you really think about it. But a lot of people I see, and I hate to say this, man, because it's like, it's sad because astrology is so fun and it's so easy and it's for everybody. What I'm about to say is they do this shit wrong. Oh, what do you mean, Mark? There's a wrong way to do astrology? Uh, yes and no. And this is my opinion. Take it with Saul. If you're using astrology or damn near any ology or ism, and it's not making you a better person. It's not adding to your power and agency. It's taking away from it. So I just know there's a lot of astrologers or maybe even people that don't consider them astrologers, but still let the information in their mind. Oh, shit, it's Mercury retrograde. I can't travel or oh, shit, uh, my life is going to shit. Or it's like because they heard somebody say that Mercury was retrograde. Now they have all these negative ideas and all these negative thoughts and negative assumptions. And because they're thinking negatively, they start manifesting negative shit in their own life. And that's bullshit. So I'm not here for the hype and I'm not here for the fear mongering. And I support all my content creators out there, all my astrologers who really do the work, talk their shit, man. But there's nothing to fear about a fucking retrograde, okay? I just know people want to clickbait you and they want to sell you their views and they want to sell you their um, content and, you know, add money, attention, etc. Subscribe to my channel. Yes, please. And thank you. But in any magnitude, guys, this is something that you can actually use for leverage within your life. And again, you can't change it. So we're going to get with the program. So I'm going to show you the chart. I'm going to walk you through it from start to finish. And I'm going to explain kind of how this works also just regularly as well. So this is the chart. Feast your eyes. Pretend it's not Thanksgiving. Because it almost is. And feast your eyes on this beautiful chart. And I'm actually going to copy out these dates for you guys. Boom. I was so prepared. Oh, look at me. I know I'm him. So this is about two weeks. <clears throat> I'm sorry, two months. You see, you can put your foot in your mouth still if you don't slow down. And that is really one of those examples. And hey, that says more about me than the retrograde itself. But again, this is an opportunity for us to redefine our perception and our communication. Oh, yes. So I'm actually going to restart this chart back to November 6th, even though it's the 27th. So the dates are as follows, guys. The pre-shadow will begin on the 6th of November. And what's the pre-shadow? 
What's the post shadow? What the hell does that mean? Not everybody is familiar with these terms. So the pre shadow essentially is the space where Mercury is going to end the retrograde. That's the pre shadow. When Mercury gets to a certain degree where the retrograde ends, we're in the, what's called the pre shadow phase. So this retrograde is going to end at six degrees of Sagittarius. So November 6th, Mercury will begin that pre-shadow. So we've already been in the pre-shadow technically. And then you give it about 20 days, Mercury starts the retrograde. So Mercury hasn't yet reversed until the 26th. So if you're watching this anywhere between the 26th of November to the 16th of December, Mercury is retrograde. And when you're looking at the chart, check this out. I'm actually going to show you Mercury here as well, just so you're not missing it. Where am I? Okay, there they are. It's right here in Sagittarius. It's like the little dude with the horns on his head, the cross with the dude with the horns on his head. I don't know how else to explain it. It's that little symbol. All right. And this little symbol that's even smaller, it looks like it looks like the prescription symbol, but that's really like R combined with X retrograde right there, right next to the symbol of the sign. Mercury, 22 degrees in retrograde. OK, that's where we start. And that was really yesterday, guys, when Mercury actually decided to start Michael Jackson moonwalking and turning his ass around and and freaking us out. Thriller vibes, you know, crazy. So. Then Mercury's going to bu -bu back that ass up. You get me? We just talked about it. And it's not really backing that ass up, but we're moving forward while it is, you know, sitting at the side of the stage. So it looks like we are, it, it looks like it's moving backwards from our position. So watch this over the days. Like I'm really just going to advance the chart day by day. You can see Mercury going from 22 to 21 to 20 to 19. And oh yeah, it's retrograde season, guys. Get excited. Nothing good or bad about this one, but I will just say that um, for practical advice, when you are going through this time, everything built out of Mercury energy, which is your mindset, your communication to yourself and everybody else, how you operate within your environment, third house energy, your technology, your travels, all of this stuff may be more challenged. We love a challenge. Challenges are not good. They're not bad, but they could be good or bad, depending on your perception, right? So my best advice for all the retrogrades, it's so simple. It's crazy. I waited this long to get to the point. Just slow the fuck down, guys. Just center yourself. Just remember your life unfolds in accordance with your words and your perception. It's not what you're seeing. It's how you're seeing it. All right. So I'm going to just leave it here as a question. When it comes to Mercury retrograde, what mindset do we need to adopt? That's the question. My answer that comes from my heart is a winning mindset. What does that look like? That's for you to decide. And then also, what is distracting you? I don't have the answer for you because it's a very personal question. This would be relative to your own goals, your aspirations. What do you think about your life? What do you think your purpose is? What do you think you need to focus on? You know, these are the prompts for the retrograde season because this is all about communication. And can you improve your communication? That's another question. And me personally, I could tell you I've got some crazy Mercury angles. So what I've found is that slowing down helps me communicate personally. Some people communicate way too slow, so that might not help them. But I digress. You know, how can you be a better communicator? If you ask the question and want to know the answer, you knock on that door, figuratively speaking, it will open unto you, okay? So we do have some pretty interesting angles. Well, actually, before I get into these angles, let me just show you guys how this retrograde ends, okay? So let's move forward to the 16th. You know, Mercury is backing it up. And then basically on, you know, the 14th, it starts to station, which essentially means instead of appearing to move backwards, it's sitting still, stationed is still. And then on the 16th day of December, Mercury moves direct. It's finally getting forward motion again. So we have this Mercury retrograde from the dates of 
November 26th until December 16th. So pretty beautiful, guys. And don't fear the retrogrades. But the retrograde still has that post-shadow phase. And basically, the post-shadow phase is essentially when Mercury has to recover the distance between when the retrograde stopped and the distance where it started at, essentially. And with these degrees, you should be able to see what I'm saying. That Mercury is moving around the Earth just like we are. It's going to appear to stop. All right. It's going to reverse, go backwards. Then it will stop at some point and then it will move forward. So basically the post shadow is that distance between the last stop and then moving forward to the part where it stopped at initially. Okay. Anything else I say is just words. You should see it. And if it doesn't make sense, just maybe take a second to think about it. Okay. But essentially the post shadow is going to end on January 2nd. So we really have retrograde season as far as Mercury is concerned for the end of the year. But let me show you guys something crazy before I even like advance the chart up that far, which some of you guys don't really need me to do because you understand what I'm saying. But look at this. Mars is retrograde. What else? Jupiter is retrograde. Saturn just got done with the retrograde. We've got Uranus is retrograde. Neptune just got done as well. We got Chiron, you know, and a lot of planets are retrograde. Again, this is not a good or a bad thing, but essentially... When a planet goes retrograde, folks, the energy is expressed more internally as opposed to externally within the world. So this is going to give you the opportunity to work with the energy of the planet and to calibrate it within your own life. So what I will say about this specific retrograde is, again, it's going from six Sagittarius to 22 Sagittarius, and we're kind of traveling within that range. OK, so, of course. Mutable signs are going to be the most affected this time. So if you are a Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Mercury, or have any other planet, even Pluto in there, this will be for you more intense, more pronounced. If you have Gemini placements, this is going to hit you more deliberately. If you have Sagitt well, Ge uh, Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, Virgo. I was like trying to think about what the other mutable ones were. Just repeating myself. But at the same time, you want to understand that any placements between 6 and 22 are going to be aspected. It could be in Aries. It'll make a trine with that one. It could be in Taurus. It would end up being in conjunct. It could be Cancer. It could be any of the 12 signs, guys, literally. All planets are an aspect to each other. So beyond everything I've said already, this is one of the best times that you can know yourself, learn yourself, study something. What better to study than you? Ooh. So a little fun fact. I want to tell you guys something crazy. Mercury, because of its proximity to the sun and our distance from the sun, Mercury can only ever be 28 degrees away from the sun at max. All right, guys, this is a physical fact, an astronomy fact. Mercury retrograde doesn't always start at 28 degrees of distance from the sun but i'm telling you the closer mercury goes to 28 degrees away from the sun the closer we're going to a retrograde cycle so when you see a person and you know their sun sign someone says oh, i was born in august late august so okay cool you're a virgo that's going to tell you quite literally they can only have one of three different mercury placements their mercury is either going to be in virgo or it's going to be in leo or libra which are the adjacent signs surrounding Virgo, okay? So with that being said, you know, when we have Sagittarius season, Mercury retrograde is going to be in Sagittarius. Sometimes it might be in Scorpio. It might be in Capricorn, the signs adjacent. But those are the only signs it could really be in. But this time it's going to stay in Sag the whole time. But watch your planets, watch your chart. And see how it transits. So I do have a couple angles. Like I was going to show you guys about. And I'm going to post these. In the weekly podcast. Mars Day with Mark. Like we do every week pinky. 
But what we have is three pretty interesting angles for Mercury this time. Okay. And I'm going to do that better. Boom. Here they are. All right. Boom. So on the third, it's December. It's coming up really quick, actually, guys. So we will have, you know, a new moon. Let me back this up a little bit. I'm too far ahead of myself. We're going to have a new moon in Sagittarius. Get excited. But after this new moon, a couple of days after, Mercury is going to oppose Jupiter. And this is a really interesting aspect this time around because both of these planets are in opposite signs. So what we call that is mutual reception, mitigating sympathy. Mercury is in Jupiter sign and Jupiter is in Mercury sign. Do you guys remember? Some of you know this, but do you remember when I said Mercury rules Gemini? So we have Mercury opposite Gemini and you have Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius, which is opposite Sagittarius. What? I mean, that's cool math, like cool math games. You guys remember that website? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I digress. But this is going to link Mercury and Jupiter together. All right. And there's already going to be some linkage with them in their respective, or I should say oppositional signs, respectively. So Mercury in Jupiter is like exaggerated thoughts. This could expand curiosity. It's an abundance of thinking. Okay. You're going to want to know everything and everybody, and you're probably going to have a hard time accepting a simple answer for something. But the most beautiful thing I think about the Mercury and Sagittarius and Jupiter and Gemini, and especially this angle where they come connecting at a stronger level is the student mentality, the willingness to learn, the want for more knowledge. But at the same time, this can add confidence that can add meaning to the intellect. And then there's this need to share our ideas and essentially you're going to see a lot of people yapping we've already been seeing this it's been a long time of jupiter and gemini really but in any magnitude attitude is really key when it comes to mercury guys when you really think about it your mental life your mental health your perception your focus how you interpret information that is attitude that is mindset okay so to me, this looks very beautiful. This looks very positive. I'm, by the way, I digress, but I'm like a Jupiter Pisces person. I'm a Leo as well. So what, what I mean by those two things is I love life, man. Life is beautiful and I believe life is good and I'm excited. So when I think about astrology, I always want to see the silver lining. I always want to see the highest expression of these archetypes. Okay. And this is a positive mind. Mercury mind jupiter positive oh yes okay so that's really cool where you may not only have a optimistic way of looking at the world you may also have this calling to share your ideas okay but attitude is really important too because if you find too much meaning or too much certainty or you are basically too inflexible in your own thoughts you can come off as arrogant you can come off as boastful or self-righteous or grandiose and you may even be correct in your ideas but people may not like to listen to what you're saying or they might reject it because of the delivery basically okay so that's just something to think about and if you have mercury and sagittarius or like some mercury jupiter stuff going on in your chart you already know this is like a refining task in your life it's not what you say it's how you say it that really makes a difference within life oftentimes okay so that's just something to think about, something to be aware of. And what's crazy is right after Mercury goes opposite to Jupiter, we get Mercury squaring Saturn so quick with the quickness, guys, because Mercury, well, actually, it's like almost at the same time, put it down on this, the sixth. And I want to say this is an important conversation when we start breaking down the, the degrees and get into the specifics. In astrology, we have what's called an orb. I'm going to draw an orb in the middle it's like a circle right the orb have you ever pondered on the orb so i'm gonna kind of draw it around mercury draw it around saturn basically and the idea is these are quite literally planets they are round allegedly some think the earth is flat bro imagine if the earth was flat and all the other planets were flat <laughs> orbiting around the sun that'd be crazy be like boxes <laughs> hold on let me let me change them from 
orbs to boxes. Okay, that's messed up. But uh, I don't like that. That just that's not good. Why is it not good? I don't I don't I don't know. Okay, but essentially, because this is my point, because the planet has mass, because it has size, there's going to be some room for the aspects, the angles, the degrees to kick in or kick out, okay? So I'm giving you these dates for the exact aspect, the opposition, the trine, the square, you know, that's going on this month. But just understand, my point really is that We'll feel the energies for a few days before, a few days after, because Mercury is pretty quick. So as far as like, you know, plus or minus five degrees, you'll feel that probably about, you know, like like the week of this date, like three to five days before, three to five days after. But that's my point. So essentially, uh, the perfect Mercury Saturn square is on the 6th of December, but we really have this a little bit before and after. OK, so what does this mean? Mercury square to Saturn is an extremely serious mentality. Okay. And also at the same time, I talked about this in uh, my last podcast, but you know, the sun is also going to be making a square to Saturn around the same time. Cause again, Mercury and the sun go pretty close together. So beyond the attitude in the mental life and perception being very serious, stern, Saturnian, etc., the energy, the life force, the joy is going to be very, stern serious locked in okay so you know thank the universe that we're sliding out the jupiter opposition because we're gonna need that positive thinking we're gonna need that confidence we're gonna need that faith in life to really help us get ourselves together to improve our lives in a very positive way and i know this video is about mercury guys but i just want to say you need to subscribe to this channel because i talk about these cycles regularly before they happen on the same time frame, we're going to have Mercury and Pluto make a cycle, uh, begin a whole new cycle. It's like the new moon, but for Mercury, Pluto. Or I'm sorry, Venus, Pluto. I'll be putting my foot in my mouth. I know what I'm talking about, but I say the wrong thing. Venus, Pluto, you can see it in that other circle in the middle, okay? So that means something as well. And there's a video for Venus and Capricorn. I'll link it down below if you guys haven't seen it yet. It talks about that specific angle too, Okay. But this is not about that. I just had to throw that in there. Like there's so much to look at. And while while you think about Mercury retrograde, just understand that this is an isolate part of the solar system. This is a, a gear in the clock, basically. This is one hand on the clock. This is like the second hand, okay? And higher time frames hold higher powers, okay? Remember that. Higher time frames hold higher powers, so Mercury is like the lowest time frame, right? To the point where you, and it's 11, 11, as I'm saying this, guys, where you barely notice what Mercury is doing until it starts retrograding and kind of kicking in one of its higher level transits and therefore aspecting certain other planets, okay? But pay attention to the Mercury retrograde. And let me put the annotations back on. So I will just say that uh, when it comes to Mercury square Saturn, this, to me, is about strengthening your mind, changing your mind, adjusting your paradigms. Because if you're too rigid, you're too inflexible, you're prone to depression in this life, okay? So just understand that, that Saturn is our paradigms. And if we get crushed under them, we're going to feel depressed. So don't be so attached to your mind or the way that you think or your circumstances in your life to the point where you forget that you created your paradigms, okay? And really, it's a little bit beyond positive thinking. It's a little bit beyond just saying the right affirmations, guys. We need to question our thoughts and really think about the nature of our assumptions. Because once again, this is the craziest thought I can share with you today. Words will limit ideas. They will encase an idea. You have a thought, but you have to start to build it with words in order to communicate it. And let's just maybe use an example. Let's say that when you were a kid, your parents used to just leave you by yourself all the time, like in the baby crib or whatever. And it's like, when you're a kid, the whole world revolves around you because you're egocentric. You haven't really formed a social context, et cetera. So it's like, you may not really even know how to speak for a while until you learn to say mama and dada and baba and whatever the fuck, right? So when you start learning how to communicate and learning how to 
use words and describe things and speak and talk and etc. You know, you could think about those experiences where mom and dad leave you alone all the time. And it's like, then you naturally would think, well, why, why does this happen? What's the point of this? Like, who are these people? You know, you ask a lot of questions. That's how you learn. But because of the limitations of your knowledge, because of your experiences, because of your wantingness to articulate your experiences with words and thoughts, you may narrate this from your subjective experience and, you know, kids can form a negative assumption right off the rip. Like at, as a kid, like my parents aren't here because I suck and they might not even know the word suck at that point, but I hope you guys see what I'm saying. Right. So it's like so early in the person's life, they can start to define themselves or define their experiences in a certain way to the point where it becomes habitual. And then it becomes an assumption or a deeply embedded belief. Okay. And that's what I'm telling you about this Mercury retrograde. And really all of them is that this is the time to get your mind right. It's the time to get control over your communication with yourself. Like I said, it's of course going to be positive affirmation, but it's deeper than that. It's questioning your perception. It's questioning the narrative that you choose to engage in and redirecting these patterns into more positive ways. So I hope that illuminated your life. Hope that helped. I have one other thing to share with you guys. Really, that's like the apotheosis of this video. But just do understand, Mercury is also going to do a trine to Mars. And we love that. And that's going to be on the 16th. The 13th. I'm tripping. I'm bugging. The 13th. All right. And again, it's going to be plus or minus some days, of course. But Mercury trine Mars is a strong mind. You know, strong, strong body, strong mind, mind over matter. And it stands to reason that powerful people would also have powerful bodies. And I'm glad I said that. Thanks, Mark. So here's the deal, guys. Mercury rules the third house in Gemini, perception and communication. But also it rules Virgo sixth house energy, which is basically our focus and our service and our habits our daily schedule, our daily routine. So Mercury retrograde is really a time to get your shit together. That's the best way I could say it. You know what I mean when I say that. But if you don't, if you're playing dumb, that shit you do every day that you know doesn't bring you forward, really drains your energy, fucks up your life, stop doing that shit. Just stop. You don't need my permission to tell you this, but that's the meaning of these transits is that you can readjust some things too. And on that same note, this kind of goes to both the third and the sixth house, is that your environment, third house, but also how you interact with the environment, sixth house, is very important, okay? We are products of our environments, my friends. So what will make the most sense is to make sure you're in the right environment, first of all, and then second of all, keep it clean, Okay. If your environment is needlessly cluttered and disorganized and restricted, your mind is also going to be needlessly cluttered, disorganized, and restricted. And that's going to fuck your life up in some way, shape, or form. All right? So organization is key when it comes to Mercury. And if you're not organized in your personal life, how could you be the leader of any organization, period? You couldn't. Or you'd be a really bad boss, bad leader. All right? So don't do that. And lastly... Mercury rules over technology. So just understand that technology is a tool and a tool is limited to your understanding and your application of the tool. So this is the time to clean the car, do a maintenance check. If you happen to have a car, get your fluids replaced, check the brakes, check the oil, etc. Delete apps on your phone, delete pictures off your phone, delete contacts off your phone clean off the computer physically and digitally, uninstall old programs, make folders in your phone and make folders on your computer so you can organize your desktop, organize your apps because you spend so much time on technology. It really is that damn phone that fucks up your life. We were talking about what's your distractions. It's that fucking phone. It's that damn phone. And I'm telling you, and I'm hopefully giving you a good return on your investment of time and energy watching this video, but just understand this same phone or computer that you can doom scroll for eons on is the same one that you can change your life with through 
the World Wide Web of Information, and also the global community, the internet. You can change someone's life just with a message, okay? So what is your message to the world? I'll leave you to think about it. It's Mr. Meyer with the fire, here to take the collective vibe higher. And our sole intention for our family is to reconcile all paradox with love and truth. And I love you. Take care. Brush your hair.